14-year-old Taiwan Poindexter was killed in a drive-by shooting as he and some friends were walking to a nearby school park. 16-year-old was shot in the chest and died. A 17-year-old boy dead after a shooting. The shooting death of 9-year-old Taishan Lee as Chicago police tonight searched for his killer. The 14-year-old had just begun his freshman year at Wendell Phillips Academy when he was killed last night. We've felt tragedy. Um, you know, our city is going through a tremendous amount of violence among youth. We lost two youth in the last two years ourselves. And so that's why having a safe environment like ours is so critical. Schools have to be places where kids learn to get along uh, despite you know, their differences. It's not good enough just to run school. You have to be present. I am Juan Salgado. I'm a son, I'm a brother, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a community leader. I'm a leader of an organization called the Instituto del Progreso Latino, a wonderful organization that believes in the power of education. In that video, um, the mayor's plan listed five different areas of focus. Being an educator in Chicago and navigating conversations about the reality of violence in this city, it's scary and it's exhausting because at the end of the day, um, some of my students are walking through dope spots and, and neighborhoods where they're at risk, like physically, on a daily basis. And it's hard to not be able to like just stop the presses and like freeze time and be like, I don't want that to be your reality anymore. Okay, let's look at the second stanza. Because it just reminds me of myself. We would just get blasted because we didn't want to be stressing no more and just forget about everything that was going on around us. Sure. The way of escaping. I left my old school because of the bullying. Because people just, want to attack one another just because of the way they dress and they look. Because some of us are affiliated and we're just trying to keep each other protected because each one of us, we're family to, to one another. Instituto uh, has always had a belief for ensuring that we work with the entire family. We work with parents, we work with grandparents, we work with children, and we absolutely work with our youth. And so we had a vision for helping our kids explore careers in healthcare, helping our kids connect to opportunities uh, that are out there in a growing industry where there are a lot of job opportunities and quite frankly, very few Latinos going into those occupations. Okay, so once your group knows how much water you need, send one person to get that amount of water. What you'll find in this building during the day, two different charter high schools. One that serves students that are coming straight from eighth grade, that are interested in a health sciences career, that still have a tremendous amount of parent involvement in their lives. Because you want to do engineering, right? Yeah. That's how I went to school there too, man. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's stay in touch. Okay, good seeing you. Our other charter school that works with out-of-school youth, 16 to 21 year old kids who are in many cases over 50 percent of them parents themselves already who may not you know have that same parental involvement but they have other adults maybe in their life that are impacting them in positive ways and so they're all from our community right and they're all great kids and i try to create the same kind of environment that i have for my children at home for the children that do come to our school Yo de mi hija me siento muy orgullosa porque ella desde muy pequeña ha sabido lo que ella ha deseado estudiar. Pues esta escuela para mí ha sido una de las privilegiadas y sí recomendaría que mis hijos vinieran a esta escuela. Oh, the feeling I have in the school it's really really positive because um, it's a community that it doesn't only help the students but it also helps the parents, especially because we know as, la as Latinos, they don't know a lot of information about education. And this is what the school focus on, on the parents knowing what the child is and what are the process to go to college. Being an immigrant 
it's incredibly hard. Okay. You're leaving everything. It's a huge sacrifice. And people do it because they want something better for their children. It wasn't until I was in college that um, I really started to explore that more deeply. And partly because I had experienced what my mother experienced, you know, and you're kind of alone and you're in an unfamiliar environment and you're searching for answers about what's happening in society and you have choices to make, right? It was kind of that point in life where I kind of knew that, that I was gonna be doing something in community, basically. If there wasn't a school like this, I probably would have been like back in the hospital for my depression because I would have figured myself out. Like they're giving me that love, the communication, that friendship, the trust and everything that I was never provided. I had dropped my children off at school and went to an early morning meeting when I got the phone call. It was just a complete, complete shock. They said, this is the MacArthur Foundation, and they gave me the news that I was a MacArthur Fellow <laughs> and that I would receive $625,000 and that I would be part of this fellowship for five years. This was happening without me knowing. Apparently, as they went on to tell me, they had talked to lots of different people, and those people were sworn to silence. It's just magical, and it's the kind of thing that you don't even dream of because um, our dreams are even limited, right? <laughs> I want everybody to understand here that, you know, we don't look for those kinds of accolades in our organization. We just try to do the right thing every day, right? Sometimes we get it really right, and sometimes we gotta get it better. But every day we take that next step, we pass the baton, we take the leadership, we face the challenge, and we take it on.